In this video, I'm going to specifically address a mechanic, a grammar mechanic uh, that I use that I've been asked questions about numerous, multiple, countless times. Uh, and that is regarding the sick mechanic meaning we have some brackets and then we have the letters SIC within those brackets a lot of people have questions about this mechanic uh, as a matter of fact uh, some of my students some of my top students uh, themselves are not clear on the closure of the sick now I have addressed this issue or this mechanic in multiple videos however I have not yet done one video specifically addressing it so therefore much in the same uh, be, the same volition behind me making the video giving closure on the tilde I will give closure in this one specifically to sick so that you the viewer can just type the sick in brackets into the search bar on my YouTube channel and this video hopefully will come up and you'll be able to study it free of charge my gift to you so without further ado let's get rolling so if I were you or if I were a researcher or if I wanted to study something find something out about something I would go to the easiest place to look for closure or to begin to gain closure. What's the easiest place for most people? The most accessible place? Well, by George, it's Google. Google is a wonderful resource for these types of things. So what did I do? I typed sick into the search bar and look what came up. Google began to give me closure on what sick means. It is used in brackets after a copied or quoted word that appears odd or erroneous to show that the word is quoted exactly as it stands in the original. Um, so basically, it is giving, it is credentialing the fact that I'm writing something that I know is incorrect, such as on the syntax key. Um, let me tilt my screen back a little bit. You can see adverb is sicked. Adjective is sicked. Pronoun is sicked. That means that I know that there's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of that word. I know it's not correct grammar, so I'm sicking it because it's an either incorrect grammar or misspelling or something. There's something wrong with it that's not correct. Rather than correcting it, I am writing it as is. Um, sick. Let, let's go a little bit further into it here. This people also ask section is a wonderful section to check out as well. What is sick meaning? The sick you see in quoted text marks a spelling or grammatical error, specifically spelling or grammatical error, period, end of story. Sick comes from Latin, which it means so or thus. What is sick example? In this context, it means intentionally so written or as my wife pointed out to me, S-I-C. Uh, just to remember what it means, could also mean spelled incorrectly. Uh, so that's enough of that right here. We just got some closure on what it means. Let's go to Etymology Online and see what they say. A Latin word insertion parenthetically imprinted quotation to call attention to error in the original, literally, so, thus, in this way. Proto-Indo-European root, so, this, that, or the third. So, it appears as though sick 
Not that it matters because it is in brackets. The sick is non-tangible. So let's find out what it means in a Latin dictionary. Yes, indeed. Thus, in this way, as I do, as you see. Sick. So this is taken from my co-dictionary. And as you see here, uh, I give a finite mean for sick. Sick of this finite mean is with this claim of the correctness with the location of a quantum math language with this certification by this charter vessel claim. Backwards for this charter vessel claim of this certification is with a quantum math language of the location with the correctness of this claim with the finite mean by the sick. Which, to translate into plain simple English, when I use sick like this, or as I'm going to show you down below here, this is in the context of correct sentence structure, i.e. quantum math language. So this is one way. As you can see on my board back here, adverb, or on the paper here, or on the, the document, adverb is sicked. Evidence, because it's a vowel in front of a consonant, is sicked. When you see someone write their name like this, as this individual always writes their name, they have colon space, Russell hyphen J colon Gould. This is not correct, so therefore this would be sicked. And I'm marking in yellow the area that is not correct. And the same thing here in number four. You would have a sick after that space after the colon. And then also the K is not correct. So I have sicked that second name there in Mark Cashone. That is not correct. And then in this one, I give an example in the sentence for this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the trespass with the perpetration of the internal. You have a vowel in front of a consonant. That's not correct. So I've sicked it. Revenue is not correct because of the RE, and I've sicked that. With the fictitious conveyance of the grammar with the audit by this grammar auditor and document contract court authority, Jason Matthew Glass. And then backwards, that would be for this grammar auditor and document contract court authority, Jason Matthew Glass of this audit is with the grammar of the fictitious conveyance with the internal revenue service of the perpetration with the trespass of the claim with the facts by this claimant's knowledge. And then in 6A, you can see I have bills for the bills of the lading. Because it's a common term, sometimes you might find yourself having to use that no contract gerund modifier in lading, so therefore you could sick it. And now it's being safely and correctly conveyed. Another way you could do it is to write it like this, for the bills of the laid, and then put the ing in brackets, and no sick is necessary. Both of these are correct. Uh, Notice, ladies and gentlemen, and this doesn't have to do with the sick or anything like that. Notice that the colon in front of the B in bills is not underlined. That is because that is a position lodial phrase and is not part of the fact. You would only underline part of the fact or the name or the title that you wish to be taken as a whole entity. That is why this is underlined. So bills of the lading is to be taken as a whole. So if you were to write a sentence with that, such as, for the bills of the lading of this contract,
Just a simple sentence. For the bills of the lading of this contract are with the reception by this claimant. For this claimant of the reception is with this contract by the bills of the lading. Now, just to give another example of the sick, you could take the brackets out of the reception and then put the sick there. And now you're using sick. And also, you must... Well, you not you don't have to. I'm not saying going to say you must, uh, but what I do is I underline these words, these no contract, these words with particles and negation that I sick. I underline them like this and like adverb and evidence and all that, and I give closure to them in my correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contract, dictionary. That's why they're underlined. I'm claiming them as salvage. I'm salvaging them so that they don't harm anyone. Okay, like for example, this word contract, if I were to take the hyphen out, now there is a particle of negation in the word contract, meaning contra. So I would have to sick that word now. Do you see? Because that particle of negation contra is in there. So rather than do that, what I did uh, some time ago, was I just did a salvage on the word contract and I put the hyphen in there to make sure that contra would not be a particle of negation. I separate the fact con, which means together, from the word tract, which just means a, a, a geometric level playing field. So we're together on the same geometric level playing field, con tract, rather than contra, which is, means no, no act. Hope you enjoyed this video on the sick. Hope it gave you some closure and gave you some ideas of how you can use it in your correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel core venues. If you don't know what I mean by that and you'd like to learn this grammar technology, contact me at the email address listed at the uh, bottom of your screen where you can apply for a correct grammar workshop. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you can ask me whatever you want and uh, we can find out if this is something that you really want to do. I've been teaching this grammar for five years, ladies and gentlemen. Hundreds of people all over the earth. And uh, this year has actually been my most successful year. I've had my best class of students this year. The more I teach, the better I get. I teach every week, almost every day. And uh, it's just been fascinating and a blessing uh, to have this technology in my life. Thank you very much, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. Uh, for bringing this to the public. Uh, you can study my YouTube channel, close to 500 videos on this YouTube channel, just like this one, free to you. Uh, my gift to my fellow mankind, if you want to support the channel, there are two tiers of membership. You can click the join button below the video and uh, support the channel, of course. And um, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.